another challenge for us is green. You guys have any idea how can logistics uh, help the environment? Uh, Does anyone? Okay. You know, actually, I can say uh, something about it. Um, very simply, I think uh, two or three years. You're from Nokia, right? Yes. You guys have one of the best environment problems for logistics yes. in the world. So, so we have reduced the sales packaging yeah. in, in like in this size to this size, and in doing that we have saved uh, twelve thousand trucks for logistics, yeah. and consequently we save four hundred something million euros yeah. with logistics as well. Exactly. And of course we save the paper because we reduce the uh, the amount of uh, user guide inside the box and etc. So. Perfect. And Mr. Kirby didn't, didn't like it. <laughs> Mr. Kirby didn't like it, that's true. Yeah. He didn't like it. But you know, you know the thing that he liked about the cell phones? He has, this guy here, Nokia, they have a big trouble today, which is the batteries, the lithium batteries that, that is inside the cell phone. And then we call today the reverse logistics. But, and they have a, I can talk about You can talk about yeah. that? Fantastic. <laughs> Well, what he's having issues with that, not, of course not, not anymore because Nokia has a very good set, but the, the cell phone companies are having big issues with lithium batteries and Mr. Trucker is now, let me give you a, let me give you a solution on that, and he's doing that. You know what? We're taking them down and Trucker is doing, he's creating warehouses and he is also limiting uh, his service with uh, destruction companies. Companies specialize on destruction of, of batteries just to serve this uh, company such as Nokia. Very, very, very important. Um, I just want to make a quick comment about packaging. Since you mentioned that, go ahead. That I the packaging. I thought it was pretty clever. I have a, a, a small child and, uh, you know, recently was her birthday and all the toys and things that she got and the amount of trash that, you know, all these toys and the packaging is unbelievable. But this company came out with a package that actually becomes, you know, if you reverse like this, you close and then there is a place for you to put from and, and to and from and it becomes like the gift wrapper. Really? The, the, package itself, wow. and I thought, wow, what a clever idea, you're saving paper, you're saving a ton of things. Sometimes, sometimes, so. sometimes. Well, the other, one of the other things that the logistics companies are looking to, to uh, make the, the life better, and to save the world, is uh, what we call the, the intelligent consolidation centers. Uh, Remember when Cecilia had many trucking companies working for us, for her, and Mr. Trucker said, let me concentrate everything and then pick all your suppliers. So he's on, it's only one truck that is going outside and collecting and picking up the cargo. That's another way of doing this, um, uh, of what we call in our company, a green concept of helping um, the environment. So it's another thing, and it's a challenge for us. This is becoming very usual on bids today in our use. Every time we participate on them, there is like a target of reducing Nokia does that at that time. I was I had a meeting like three weeks ago, it was in my new study for in in Helsinki. Why do you guys ever have house in Helsinki? And invite us during the week to go there. It was forty two degrees here and I had to go like I just want to just say a little comment because this uh, environment and market is growing so fast that if the companies can be aligned with this revolution, this green revolution is going to be a you know a huge yeah. impact, and I think it, 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 there is room to grow so fast. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a big challenge for us. Information management keeps being multiculturalist. We have a control tower, we call control tower in Singapore, <coughs> Sao Paulo, Jacksonville, and Amsterdam. Control tower is where we control, uh, of course, 
uh, the, the flows of our customers. So if you want to know where is your car, you're delivering throughout the world, you call my control tower. And it's in it where we speak 12 languages, in Africa we speak eight, in Brazil we speak four languages. So multicultural is also a big challenge for us for, for this market as well. Supply chain, I'm sorry, supply chain design is also a challenge. Every time you see it's demanding more things, she's selling to IET, she's selling to Zimbabwe, so it's, it's quite hard for us to design uh, the needs of Cecilia that, that she's having every day. And uh, hey, you pay the customers for outsourcing. She is a customer that is still having her own trucks, is still doing the old fashioned way. So one of my challenges is to educate her and to show her that this no, not my channel. Mr. Trucker challenges. Yes. Show her how he can, how she can save money uh, outsourcing uh, transportation, <coughs> outsourcing logistics. Um, innovate. Myself, myself, my mind is working. Are you here? Okay. Uh, innovation. This is fun. I, I like, I like this one. Uh, is this what my company does? It's very, very um, pioneer. We are running, Mr. Trucker found out that Cecilia was having issues. She, now she produces cars, okay? She doesn't produce cell phones and microphones anymore. She was having problems, and this is General Motors, um, of um, uh, uh, reassembling the engines. So we, Mr. Stirker, went to Cecilia, to General Motors, and said, you have problems of assembling your engine. Let me do that for you. Let me try doing that for you. You don't have supplies that you know, they are not finding suppliers that were interested to do that for them. And today, this plant, this people that you see here, is a logistic company doing the pre -assembly. So, who has a General Motors car with my company, the company I work for, not my company, that made the pre assembly of the. I hope you don't have a big call. <laughs> uh, that we make the pre assemblies of the, of the engines. Um, what else? Well, remember when I said that 4.2 trillion, and now this truck is assembling engines. So, so can you imagine, imagine how big is going to be the market that now it starts to do training services and assembling the cars? And the future is that. I'm going to tell you, uh, this company, Nokia is one, one, one example of that. Dell is one example of that. That, of that by Coca Cola. Mark is not here yet, right? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Coca Cola is another. These guys, they want, want to have the brand. The rest of the thing, they want to outsource. They only have marketing and the brand. The, the rest, the production, logistics, etc., they want to outsource. This is a huge opportunity for me as a trucker. Summary. From Facundo to Cecilia, right? And you missed the trucker there in the middle to something like this. From supplier to user, manufacturing support, multimodal, customs brokers, inbound, outbound, value added service. We started to go really inside and outside the company, inside to think how can I help you, Cecilia? How can I make money? On your, on your needs and how can I save money for you on that? Okay, food for thought. And Fabiano helped you know this. <laughs> <laughs> how can the translation and organization market add value to its customers? I remember once I was studying I I am a, I am also a trainer for the company I work for, and that was before we did the name board. So we had an issue, that was in the 19 something. We had an issue of uh, translating uh, of, um, of, uh, of training session to people in binders like that, uh, of translating in five languages. And we, we had a company that could translate, but we didn't have a single company that could translate, print, put the binders together, Deliver it to South America, to Latin America. We didn't have one single company doing that. Why can't the translation company do that? Uh, actually, you do that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Fantastic. So, I think, I think, sorry. No, I don't have that. 